last five months. Great to be back. I'm here with editor at large of Reason Magazine, Matt Welch, and senior editor for the Dispatch, Sarah Isger. Okay, Sarah, which one of the Trump indictments do you think is the strongest? Oh, there's so many to choose from. <laughs> question. It's the Florida case about the classified documents and the obstruction side. You'll notice Trump and his allies never talk about that one. The other cases are all much weaker in a variety of ways, but oh. that Florida case... So this is the one where he took classified documents and put them by the toilet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, is that, why is that such a strong case? Uh, it's after he's president. Um, there's just no real legal defense to, you know, even if you're really constipated, needing those documents by your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know what they're going to say, which is Biden did the same thing. He had papers by his Corvette. He didn't defy a subpoena. That's and true. Lie oh, about it. I know that. I'm just he's saying. not charged with having the documents or taking the documents. He's charged with not giving the documents back. Right. When the government was like, knock, knock, can't right. we have our documents back? And, what documents? And see, this is what I mean when I always say he's stupid and crazy. <laughs> There's. <laughs> They're stupid, like, I think Frederick Douglass is still alive. <laughs> the, the stealth bomber is literally invisible. You know, healthcare is, you know, no one knew it was complicated. Those are stupid. Crazy is this. It's just crazy. It's just a crazy, unforced error. Why do it? He wasn't even looking at them. He, it just was, they're mine. Yeah. <laughs> That's... And then when they came and asked for the documents, and he said no, and then they tried to move the documents, then he realized that was on camera, and so then he told the guy to flood the server. To, I mean, it was like <laughs> every step. Okay. Uh, Nikki? Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep yucking it up, guys. Keep yucking it up. That lady that left us loony, um, the way she's talking about the reason why they're not talking about it, honey, because they mansplain it to you, is because that's the weakest one out there. He's the president of the United States. He can declassify those at any time. And when they came knocking on his door and said, Mr. President, you have some documents that are there, he probably wanted to basically tell them to shove it up their ass. All right? Who the hell are you guys coming and asking me, the president of the United States? There's no legal law that's out there that says that those papers, those documents, have to be returned backward, back to him. He's the president of the United States. He can take any papers that he wants. He can declassify them. He didn't do anything illegal with them. It is low, low-hanging fruit, folks. Low-hanging fruit. Anyways, we're going to get to more of this uh, interview with Bill Maher and his two leftist lunatic guests, as he is as well. You're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host. My name is Dr. Nasser where I give you my political prescription from my political perspective. What happens when you have leftists like Bill Maher get together with idiots like these two and they talk about things like Trump, social media, justice, they polish their halos, they virtue signal, all that comes crashing together. Let's get back to more of this leftist lunatic interview right now. In the polls this week. Oh, good for you. Nine uh, to 10%, nailing it. Follow <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Are there enough establishment voters in the Republican Party for her to become a serious rev revival? Revival to Trump. Revival? Rival. 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 Okay, well, <laughs> we're doing this on the fly, you know. Uh, rival to Trump, yes. Oh, uh, I hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no? There's a there was actually a really interesting poll. I, I recommend people look at the people at Fair Vote, um, who do ranked choice voting. They had a uh, a poll that basically did ranked choice with the candidates, a national poll. And so each time around, you kick someone off the island, and then you see how it it goes until you get to only two left. And Donald Trump got like 47 percent or something in the first vote, first round. And then you know Doug Burgum goes, and Mike Pence goes, bop 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 bop. He doesn't go up even a little bit. Turns out. 47% of, of Republicans really want Donald Trump to be the president. And he was also number 13 by the most people. Like, he was last place. Oh. Like, please, anybody but Donald Trump. He only, like, gets over the majority when everybody else is wiped out. Nikki Haley does very well in that poll. She comes in second once you start knocking off Chris Christie's and all these semi-establishment people. 
she will, she has the ability maybe to look, uh, to get some people who want to vote for Trump. But the only way to get to the Republican nomination is, you, and this is why Ron DeSantis still has a chance, although he's absolutely nosedived during this calendar year, is that people who like Ron DeSantis also uh, like Donald Trump sometimes. He can straddle that. Uh, Nikki Haley hasn't quite shown that, and the rest of them have no chance. She has really been across the, the board, though. I remember when the rumor was that they were having an affair. Remember that? It was, it was in the first Trump book. That, remember that? Yeah, I mean... Well, no, I didn't ever believe it either, but uh, she's gone from that to I wouldn't even have her on the ticket. Look, I worked for Carly Fiorina in 2016, and we're seeing the exact same problem that we saw then. You can't have this many candidates in the field. That poll, which was fascinating, yeah. actually showed in the end that Ron DeSantis could beat Donald Trump by three points if it were only the two of them in the race. Right. <laughs> no. Okay, so was anyone surprised? That you just basically said that he nosedived, and that's how effective and how stupid that poll is. Ranked choice voting, which is one of the most insane ways of electing candidates, one of the most insane ways. It is so bizarre. It would take years to explain this ranked choice voting, but so they're basically saying that forty-seven percent really wanted him as their first choice. They also ranked him at the bottom as a number 13 choice. And now this lady and this guy are basically saying that if it was just Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump, ranked choice is saying, and that's how screwed up ranked choice is, that he would beat Trump by three points. So head to head, Trump is winning, beating DeSantis by 50 to 60 points. But in ranked choice, DeSantis overcomes a 50 to 60 point lead to beat him by three. Just think about that, folks. Just think about how inanely, patently you know, ridiculous that is. Anyways, let's continue. That Donald Trump, boy, no. Hard to. <laughs> 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 Wait a second. Leaked intel, oh, I read this, on our nuclear submarine program to an Australian businessman. You know what? I, I, I'm the last guy to defend Trump. This sounds like BS to me. I mean, he, he of course, he does a million things that you shouldn't do, but leaked intel on our nuclear submarine program. I doubt if he knows the first thing about our nuclear submarine program. You know, I'm, I don't think it's he the first same thing Bill secrets. said. He's just bragging, you know, our submarines and go I'm underwater. Glad that it gets around the world that we can <laughs> kick your ass. <laughs> this is the you think Trump is like evil and stupid like it's kind of one of the other like no, he's an crazy evil genius and stupid. not yours I'm just saying other people oh. like you can't believe he's like the super genius who knows everything about our nuclear subs right. but also <laughs> right. he's a moron who <laughs> yeah. like doesn't know like right, right exactly right are. like it can't be both right okay all right uh, all right what okay the, <laughs> what does the panel Idiot. think of gov California governor Newsom repealing the law that banned doc banned doctors from sharing unapproved COVID information. Well, of course, I love it. They should have never done it in the first place. Doctors should be able to speak freely. The media should be the watchdog of what's going on in the government, not the megaphone, not the amplifier of it. I can't believe you brought up this case because I'm really obsessed with this idea that Newsom and DeSantis are actually, you know, different sides of the same coin when it comes to civil liberties like free speech. Right. Newsom is banning doctors from saying something about COVID that he doesn't personally believe to Well, be true. now he's not. Okay. Well, court enjoined him first, so, you know, okay. Uh, and at the same time, you know, DeSantis down in Florida is telling teachers that they can't, you know, teach certain things at universities. Like, how about just the First Amendment? I'm pro that. Yeah. Uh, I also say that Gavin Newsom wanting to run for president is the best thing that can happen to Californians. Because uh, he'll make a better governor that way. I say the same thing. Yeah. I think he's a great politician. I've been trying to get him to run for president for 15 years. <laughs> it would force him to go to the center like this kind of stuff. And that brief uh, I mentioned at the Supreme Court where he now wants to like have a different homeless policy. Like he's moving to the center on all sorts of stuff. And he can win. You know what? It doesn't hurt to have a dreamy candidate. <laughs> I'm not... It really doesn't. I'm sorry. I don't know. That bare skin rug
dog photo like really weirds me out. The what? The, the <laughs> what photo? The, the photo with um, him Kimberly and, and Kimberly Guilfoyle where he's like on the bearskin rug and it's like really, I don't know, not my type. What can I say? Uh, all right. <laughs> Should the Senate have loosened the dress code to allow for John Fetterman's shorts and casual attire? No. This, <laughs> that, I mean, that was so ridiculous. I mean, again, what is this with John Fetterman? Come on, man. If you haven't seen it, he looks like Kevin Smith. Uh, yeah. remember, remember Kevin's <laughs> the hockey shirt, the shorts in the Senate? I mean, what is it? To, what, what point is this making? What is the point of this? I, I never got it. I, uh, I'm so torn between my hatred of rules and institutions <laughs> and my hatred of inappropriate, or people who dress like me on weekends being in the Senate. That's bad. We don't want, we don't want people who I look know, like I me. I just feel it was such a stunt. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm the man of the people. But you know what? You know what the people actually have to do? Dress. Yeah, for work. Yeah, dress <laughs> for work. <laughs> All right. The people, he comes from an incredibly privileged background. Right. He's never, like, been faced with being fired for not wearing something right to work, and then, you know, that's what well, you get. The people who are always going on about privilege always have the privilege to be impractical in every possible way. <laughs> but we gotta go. Thank you, CNN. We'll see you next week. That was probably one of the most <laughs> important things that he said in a long, long time that made a lot of sense, Bill Maher. That is the people with privilege who talk about that they don't have privilege and try to do everything that they can to establish privilege for themselves by basically playing the victim card. That's exactly so true, folks. It is so true. And those same people that come out, sit on their lofty perches, virtue signaling to the rest of us, after they've spent the last 24 hours at home polishing their halos and then placing it on top of their heads and then coming out and telling us how great they are and how terrible we are for not believing in the same thoughts that they believe in and opinions that they believe in. Amazing, folks. Amazing. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow us. If you like our content, let us know about that in the comments below. What do you think? My final thoughts. Oh, before that, check out our video links above and below. My final thought, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.